What's going on Island Hoppers? Today we're coming to you from the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Let's do it. In this Minneapolis travel guide, we're going to explore all over Minneapolis. You can see Minneapolis sits right on the border of Wisconsin and Minneapolis thereabouts up there in the northern Midwest, almost near Canada. So we're going to show you guys around the Mall of America, show you guys around the downtown area. Let's do it. This right here is the Green Line. It's a light rail. It will take you from St. Paul all the way to Minneapolis if you need to. You can hear it's electrically powered. There's also buses out here, but if you need to return from Minneapolis to St. Paul, you can also do that and anything in between. For you Minnesota Vikings fans, if you look right behind me, U.S. Bank Stadium, this is the home of your Minnesota Vikings. Minneapolis is actually the 46th largest city in the United States with a population of 429,000 people. But if you include Bloomington and Minneapolis St. Paul metro area, almost 4 million people making it the 18th largest metropolitan city in the United States. Man, let me tell you about this tram. It is constantly going. It seems like every two minutes there's a tram going or a bus. So the public transport around Minneapolis appears to be very efficient. Here we are in Government Square. It's also a station, but this is where the main municipal government headquarters are, City Hall. You guys come right over here and look up at this beautiful City Hall right here. If you guys look behind me, you can see a section of the world's largest indoor pedestrian walkway that connects all of the buildings here in downtown. If you look right over here, you can see another section of the pedestrian walkway. It spans 69 blocks and up to seven miles. So this is all done because of the brutal cold winters they get in Minnesota. In 1885, news reporters came from Boston, New York, and back east to Minneapolis, St. Paul, and they said it was so cold, it was like another Siberia, unfit for human civilization. Well, the government in St. Paul decided to create a carnival and showcase all the things you can do in the winter. And in 1946, they created that carnival. It's the St. Paul Carnival. Moral of the story is it gets really cold here for eight months out of the year, seriously. So basically from October until May, it's gonna be cold. I'm here right now in early June, late May, and it's in the 50s when I woke up. With that being said, the best time to visit Minneapolis, if you guys don't want the snow, is May, June, July, August, and a little bit into September. So we're actually gonna check out this indoor skyway.
Hey, and look here. We got a statue of Mary Tyler Moore. Guess what it says? Who can turn the world on with her smile? Here we are on First Avenue. You can see we have a theater here, but if we go right across the street, you have the Target Center where the T-Wolves play, and I think that's also where the Minnesota Wild ice hockey team plays. Yeah, here I am at Target Field where the Minnesota Twins play baseball. Check it out behind me. But I'm interested in why they decided to build an outdoor stadium in one of the coldest places in America. Because you know, if they go deep into October in the World Series, playing right here in Minneapolis is gonna be a cold one. Now, why would they call them the Minnesota Twins? I don't know, because it's the Twin Cities. Even if you look at their logo, there's a T and a C, right? Right in the middle, Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul. That's why they're called the Twins. You know, they've done a nice thing where they combine the Target Center where the basketball team plays and the hockey team with the Twins at the baseball field. But the thing that I'm surprised they didn't do was put nice restaurants nearby and maybe even the parking down below. So this facility has what it takes to be cool, but it doesn't have that uh, step outside into a restaurant or bar kind of setting, which I think every single stadium should have nearby. It is inland a little bit inside here. If you go that way towards the town, there is a little bit of restaurants, but they needed that here. I don't know why they didn't do it. Not trying to be critical or anything. All right, guys, here we are at the Mall of America. It's actually the largest mall in the United States, over 5.6 million square feet. It's almost double the size of the second biggest one in New Jersey. So this is a huge mall, one of the biggest in the world. I think only Dubai is bigger. You know they have an indoor amusement park this big park with all these roller coasters going around you right here indoors sheltered from all that cold snow outside
here at Fossil getting yeah, a new watch. Uh, So as you guys can see, I got a new hat at the mall, finally. Many of you guys were saying I needed to swap out my Titleist hat. Anyway, we're here at Mill Ruins Park, right on the Mississippi River. Let's go check it out. So here we are on the banks of the Mississippi River. If you turn around right here, you can see the Mill City Museum. Uh, Minneapolis is known for its flower production. And this here, Mill City, along the boardwalk, is a museum that tells you all about that history. Right here, along the Mississippi, is the Guthrie Theater alongside the Mill Ruins. Obviously, it's called the Mill Ruins because this is where there was several mills. And if you look directly behind me here, you can see this stone arch bridge. That's what it's called. It's a pedestrian bridge that allows you to cross from one side of Minneapolis to the other. Zoom in. Beautiful bridge right over the Mississippi. Right here we have the Gold Medal Park, which is famous for a spiral walkway that goes all the way to the summit of this hill right behind me. All right, here we are at one of the more popular restaurants in Minneapolis. Believe it or not, it's called Hell's Kitchen. Let's see. Now this, now this is not Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen. This is a locally owned Hell's Kitchen. All right, here we are at the Minnesota State Capitol in St. Paul. Look how beautiful this facility is. It's currently closed, but you can see it's a gorgeous one. Here we are at the St. Paul Cathedral. This is actually a replica of St. Peter's in Rome. Very beautiful. You can see the copper dome at the top and the rose window. Here we are on Chestnut and 7th Street. This area is known as Little Italy, also downtown St. Paul, you can see gets going around six o'clock on a Friday night.
right, guys, if you look right behind me at the Excel Center, this is actually where the hockey team plays. I said earlier it was the Target Center where the Timberwolves play. Nope, it's right here in St. Paul at the Excel Center. Minnesota Wild, NHL. They're playing tonight. And as you can see above me here, they do the indoor walking pathways for pedestrians in St. Paul as well. You can see right here, if you look right over there, all the buildings are connected. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this episode of Island Hopper TV from Minneapolis, St. Paul. We will see you guys on the next one and consider liking the video if you enjoyed it. Also, Watch some of these other videos on this channel, Tour Guides Across America.